Hey, I hope that you all had a wonderful Christmas celebration. Welcome to the Open Word Bible Study, the study that takes us inside and behind the original languages the Bible was written in. Just last week, we finished our short series that was running through the major portion of the Christmas season. It was Philippians 2, verses 6 through 8, titled, The God-Man. Now today, we're actually going to extend that Christmas theme just a little bit while also giving some perspective for the new year. So in this study titled, From Days of Eternity, the passage of scripture that we're going to be reading from is Micah 5, verse 2. And I gave that little pause there, that little bit of suspense, because last week I asked you to guess what scripture we might be reading from. And so props to any of you who guessed Micah 5 verse 2. This is a passage that I rarely skip over whether I'm teaching or preaching through the Christmas season. There are many reasons why Micah 5 2 stands out as a special prophecy about the Messiah's birth as well as his rulership. Look with me as I read from verse 2. It says, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. This verse prophesies out of two possible Bethlehems at that point in time, the exact Bethlehem in which the Messiah, Jesus, was born in, and that being Bethlehem Ephrathah. Last year, we looked a little closer at this word Bethlehem. We opened it up in the Hebrew to find that it literally means house of bread, which is very fitting for Jesus, who is the bread of life. Also, the tribe that is referred to in this verse, the tribe of Judah, is the very line in which Jesus, according to his human ancestry, came through. Now today, we're going to look at yet another clue in which Micah 5, 2 points to its fulfillment being Jesus. A clue that displays his birth as being something far from a beginning. The ending words of this verse, again, say, "...whose origins are from of old." from ancient times. As we reflect on these words, I submit to you that there is no one else who could fill that description other than God himself, who is the eternal one. The Hebrew word that is used for ancient times is, from right to left, olam. Olam means long duration. It can mean antiquity, but it also means forever eternity. And to be fair, antiquity, as we see the NIV translating it here, ancient times, um, that is used in some contexts throughout the Old Testament. And you can see that that's definitely the way it should be translated. But most often, out of the 400 and something times that that word olam is used through the Old Testament, it is most often translated as eternal or forever. And I believe that that is a much better translation here in Micah 5 two. I believe that the word eternity would be more proper. This is also reflected in the Bible translations that are more word for word rather than thought for thought like the NIV is. And those translations that are more word for word would be Translations such as the King James Version or the New American Bible, uh, uh, New American Standard Bible. Look at this portion of the verse again in the NASB. It says, His times of coming forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. So there it is. We see that word olam being translated as eternity. And do you see how this sets the Messiah apart from any person who has a beginning or a lifespan, which is like everybody? I want to show you this word olam 
being used in another passage of scripture outside of Micah 5, 2. So let's look at Psalm 90, verse 2. It says there, Before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The word everlasting is used to describe God in this verse. Before creation, God was. And this is why I thought Psalm 90 verse 2 would be a good place to go because it really showcases how the Hebrew word olam can be used in this way. And that's exactly in those two references where it says everlasting, that's exactly what word is being used. It is our Hebrew word for the day, olam, both places, both times. And notice that it's not only speaking about eternity past, but also eternity future. From everlasting past to everlasting future. So that broadens the picture even more of God's eternality. This gives us also a greater picture of what is being said about the ruler back in Micah 5.2, that he was before all creation from eternity past. Again, this, this has got to be speaking about somebody very special, somebody who is God, in fact, and so uh, the only eternal one. Uh, by the way, with that being said, the word origins, which the NIV uses in this verse, I do not believe is the best translation from the Hebrew word that is behind it because origins implies a beginning point, whereas someone from eternity has no beginning. Look at how the NASB translates this again. His times of coming forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. So Jesus, the Messiah, has had these goings out from long ago, from eternity, without there being any beginning. There is a New Testament passage that speaks not only of Jesus' eternity past, but also his eternity future, both of those being components to what is said in Hebrews 13, verse 8. I love this verse. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Isn't that an awesome verse? The word forever that's translated there from the Greek is the Greek word aeon. An aeon in its more general sense, it means a space of time or even an age. But what I want us to see is that in Hebrews 13, 8, aeon is actually being used in a plural sense, meaning that it is not just an age, but it is ages. It is through the ages that Jesus is the same. Aeon happens to be the Greek equivalent to the Hebrew word we've been looking at today, olam, which again can mean forever, and that's how we see it being translated in the New American Standard Bible right there in Hebrews 13, 8 as well. So Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Emphasis being placed on forever. What great hope this brings us that with each new year, with each age that comes, Jesus, who has always been, will always be through the span of time. He who extends beyond even time itself, all of eternity, he remains the same. It is a comforting reminder as we prepare to transition from this year, 2021, into 2022 with whatever this new year brings. To know that the ruler spoken of back in Micah 5, 2 is the same eternal one that Hebrews 13, 8 declares, Jesus. Jesus' eternal existence ensures us that whatever we face, whatever may come, he is present. He is with us through it. And that he is the promised king of kings from days of eternity. I hope that that brings great comfort and encouragement to you as we round out the end of this year and again prepare to step in to the next. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much 
that you truly are the eternal one, that that goes both backwards and forwards. You have always been and you will always be. And in an amazing way, you have taken those who you've redeemed and, and you've, you've swept us into this eternity with you, this eternity future that we will be able to spend that with you forever. That, that's an amazing thought. We thank you for that, Lord. But even while we're here and that eternity has, has, uh, is already within us, we're living on this earth and we can face some difficult times. We don't know what this next year brings, but we can be comforted in you, Lord. You are with us. You've been through it all. You have carried people through the ages, through all kinds of trials and hardships, and you are still here to do the same for us. Thank you, Jesus, that it is you who is the Messiah, that it is you who Micah 5.2 is speaking about. You have come. You were born into this world, even though you're the eternal one, and you're coming back, and we're going to see you as the King of Kings when you come back. We, we look forward to that day, and we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Next Thursday, January 6th, the first full week into the new year, we'll be right back here with the open word where we are going to start a new short series. I'm looking forward to filling you in on what that is. But until that time, Happy New Year and Shalom in Christ.